We got to talk about Taylor Fritz. One of the most unsustainable streaks in all of men's tennis has been broken, which is that Fritz had never been past round three of a major. Draws have been absolutely brutal. If you look at the losses, they haven't really been that bad. But boy, this was notable and it was weighing on him. And I didn't realize how much it was weighing on him until I saw the look on his face after he beat Roberto Bautista Agut today to make the fourth round of the 2022 Australian Open. There were, there were tears. He looked like he just won a master's title. And when you think about it, it's hard to blame him. You get a chance four times out of the year to play the biggest events in this sport. And you're Taylor Fritz. You've been a top 30 level player for a long time now. And you've never seen the second week. It meant a lot for him to get through here. But as I said at the top, unsustainable. You know this wasn't going to last much longer. Too good a player for that. He did it before Alexander Zverev beat a top 10 player at a major. That's another streak. It's going to end. It's not sustainable. So congratulations to Taylor and uh, a really well-earned victory against Roberto Bautista Gut, who he was 1-5 and five against lifetime. That's one win to five losses against RBA lifetime. You could kind of feel this coming on. I mean, Fritz has been playing lights out on hard court since Indian Wells. He's got wins over Matteo Berrettini, Yannick Sinner, Alexander Zverev, Andre Rublev, Cam Nori, Cam Nori again, and Roberto Batista Gut. He is 8-2 and two against top 20 players since Indian Wells. Absurd. He's on a tear. What stood out, and I think the reason why he won this match against Batista Gut is the same reason why he's playing better. The forehand. The forehand is one of the most improved shots on the ATP Tour in the last two years. And in this match versus RBA, he hit... A whopping 37 forehand winners, 35 of them were regular ground strokes. One was a passing shot, one was a drop shot. Those don't count as much. 35 regular baseline winners off of his forehand side. Bautista Gut had 15 ground stroke winners in total. And sometimes we see these kinds of things and the errors kind of even things out. The errors didn't even things out in this case. In fact, Fritz made less unforced errors off the ground than Bautista Gut in this match. So it was tight. It was a five-setter. It took a monumental physical and mental effort by Fritz, and it was also a fantastic fight from Bautista Gut. But at the end of the day, these are quick conditions. The weather was hot. I think that helped Fritz. And the biggest weapon on the court by far was the Fritz forehand. The reason this match was close is because Fritz had a really bad serving day until the fifth set, for the most part. And Bautista Gut had a good serving day. Paul Anacone has talked a lot about the mentality shift on Taylor Fritz's forehand. It hasn't been a technical change. It's been a tactical intention change and a mindset change. And the mindset is you got to play big man power tennis. You got to go after that forehand side. The backhand has always been really good. It's always been super solid. It's been a strength of his, his entire career. He hits it with really good depth, good location, good timing when he changes direction down the line, but it's still a backhand. Physiologically, the backhand has a limit for how big it can be, especially with a two-hander. So he didn't have that complete power baseline game until he started crushing forehands. And at this point, especially when the ball is shoulder height or above the level of the net, because Fritz doesn't have the fastest swing and the most top spin in RPM, but when he can get that traje nice flat trajectory... 
He absolutely clobbers the ball these days, and it has made all the difference. The development is not technical and not so much physical, although he's gotten a lot more fit throughout his you know, development. It's been an intention thing. Let me make a, an example here. You look at Felix. What have I kind of preached with Felix Ojeali Asim? He's super fast. He's got great court coverage, so he should stop being so aggressive and making unforced errors. And he should actually utilize the fact that he can defend and he can stay in rallies. And there's no reason to play like you're six foot eight and can't move. There's no reason to play that aggressive. Well, for Taylor, it's the opposite adjustment. It's the you're never going to be the fastest guy. So play more aggressive, play big man tennis. And that's what he's done. I think he beats a vulnerable Stefano Tsitsipas in the next round. I really do. I think that 8-2 and two versus top 20 since Indian Wells, I think it's about to be 9-2. and two. Those big serving power players bother and trouble Tsitsipas on hard courts. And that is the game that Fritz is executing at such a high level right now. By the eye test, and now we have three rounds of data. He's playing bigger than Tsitsipas. He's playing bolder than Tsitsipas. He's better backhand to backhand in that cross court. Tsitsipas hasn't looked confident, hasn't looked right on that backhand side. He's using the forehand more aggressively than Tsitsipas. Steph's forehand is world class. It's probably better than Fritz's even. But... He's just looked a little bit timid using it. He's serving just as big as Tsitsipas. And there's reason to think that he's in the headspace right now to pull off this upset. I think Fritz beats Tsitsipas in the next round. And it's not going to be long until Taylor isn't just beating top 20 players. He's joining the top 20. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.